Welcome to Peace Lutheran Church here in Plainfield, Illinois. We celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. We may remember a few days ago we celebrated Good Friday, in which Jesus was crucified on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. When the women come to the tomb to prepare the body of Jesus three days later, they find that the tomb is empty. Why? Because Jesus is risen. As Christians, we greet one another with this special phrase, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. So this day we rejoice and are glad that our salvation is at hand. Jesus is risen from the dead and defeats sin, death, and the devil so that we can have life and life eternally. So this day we rejoice for the feast of the resurrection. the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. 
We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, the Father, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life to us. Grant that we, who celebrate with joy the day of our Lord's resurrection, may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for today as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 14, beginning with the 10th verse. When Pharaoh drew near, the people of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them, and they feared greatly. And the people of Israel cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us in bringing us out of Egypt? Is not this what we said to you in Egypt? Leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. And Moses said to the people, Fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians, whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to be silent. The Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Tell the people of Israel to go forward. Lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the people of Israel may go through the sea on dry ground. And I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, so that they shall go in after them, and I will get glory over Pharaoh and all his hosts, his chariots and his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have gotten glory over Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen. Then the angel of the Lord, who was going before the host of Israel, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from before them and stood behind them, coming between the host of Egypt and the host of Israel. And there was the cloud and the darkness, and it lit up the night, without one coming near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the people of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground, the waters being a wall to them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went in after them into the midst of the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And in the morning watch, 
The Lord in the pillar of fire and of cloud looked down on the Egyptian forces and threw the Egyptian forces into a panic, clogging their chariot wheels so that they drove heavily. And the Egyptians said, Let us flee from before the Lord, for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its normal course when the morning appeared. And as the Egyptians fled into it, the Lord threw the Egyptians into the midst of the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen, and all of the host of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, not one of them remained. But the people of Israel walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters being a wall to them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great power that the Lord used against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord, and they believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the people of Israel sang this song to the Lord, saying, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and the rider he has thrown into the sea. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading from Colossians chapter 3, beginning with the first verse. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go, quickly, and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb, and... So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Good Christian friends, rejoice and sing. Now is the Lord of life is risen this 
God's grace and his peace to you from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Many are lamenting this day of Easter because of COVID-19 and the stay-at-home order. The pews of many churches are empty, and this has caused a lot of concern for many Christians. While it is true, the pews are empty, we also need to remember that the tomb of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is also empty. This is the reason why we celebrate Easter. This is the reason why we rejoice. We dare not forget that the tomb of Jesus Christ is also empty. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Today's restrictions doesn't change the fact that today is April 12th, 2020, and it's the day that the church celebrates the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. We may remember on Good Friday, three days earlier, Jesus said, it is finished, and our salvation is complete, sins forgiven, life now extends forever in paradise with Jesus. Humanity didn't see it when Jesus died on the cross. It wasn't revealed until the third day when the women went to the tomb and found that the tomb was empty. We call this day Easter. We call this day the resurrection of our Lord. It has been a day of celebration ever since. Even in the midst of war, plague, famine, Christians remember with joy seeing the empty tomb. There is a lesson for us as Christians to learn this Easter as we celebrate the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We dare not forget who defeated sin, death, and the devil. It was Jesus, the Christ. He was the one who died on the cross. But yet, how quick do we forget? How quick? Do our joys turn to fears? So we need to remember and learn. And so let's go to our Old Testament reading from the book of Exodus. Moses was in the process of delivering the people of Israel from slavery and bondage in Egypt to the promised land. The Egyptians were chasing the people of Israel and had them cornered by the Red Sea. God intervenes. He parts the Red Sea, and the people of Israel were able to proceed on dry ground. Now the Egyptians continued their pursuit, and the people of Israel were scared, fearing that they would be returned to slavery in Egypt. And hear how God, through Moses, settles the people. Exodus chapter 14, beginning with verse 13. And Moses said to the people, Fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians, whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you 
only have to be silent. Fear not. We need to hear those words today. Fear not. Stand firm. The Lord will fight for you. You only have to be silent. We use these words of God today to remind us that the Lord Jesus Christ defeated the Egyptians. Jesus Christ also defeated sin, defeated death, defeated the devil. So there's no need to panic. That's why Christians greet one another with this phrase, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. For the people of Israel got to see firsthand how God defeated their enemies. They were no longer afraid. And by the way, they were no longer silent either. For they were celebrating with joy and praising God who delivered them from their enemies. We, let's pick this up from Exodus 14, verse 31. Israel saw the great power that the Lord used against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord. And they believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the people of Israel sang this song to the Lord, saying, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. Wow! To be there firsthand to see your enemies crushed, as the people of Israel did. To be there firsthand as the women went to the tomb and saw the tomb empty. Wow, talk about a life-changing experience. And it truly was and is a life-changing experience. But how quickly do we forget? How quickly does our sinful nature go back to that aspect of fear? Being attached to this world, it doesn't take us long. For the people of Israel, it took Moses, the people of, that were following Moses, three days. For the disciples of Jesus, it took them about seven days. Our sinful nature is strong. Fear creeps in. So we need to remind ourselves that we have a God who loves us, a God who forgives us, a God who guides us, a God who leads us back to him. So we continue to surround ourselves with God's word. So we hear again the word that Moses spoke to the people of Israel in the midst of their fear. And Moses said to the people, fear not, stand firm and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to be silent. Can we trust in God that he will take care of us? That he will take care of the world? Do we believe that God is still in control? Or does our fear sort of get in and say, has God abandoned us? Has God forgotten us? Hear the words of St. Paul in his letter to the Colossians, chapter 1 beginning with verse 17. And he, Jesus, is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. This passage of St. Paul's letter to the Colossians reminds us that God, who created all things, is the God who continues to sustain all things. He is the firstborn from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. We hear about the empty tomb, and so we celebrate the firstborn from the dead. We celebrate that God is in control, and we celebrate this day, knowing that God has forgiven our sins to bring us to be with him for eternal life. This passage of St. Paul's letter to the Colossians reminds us that, yes, God created all things and sustains all things and holds all things together. God is taking care of it. While we would want God to take care of the, this COVID-19 situation immediately, 
like he did with the Egyptians at the Red Sea. But we need to remember, and we also dare not forget, that the people of Israel spent many years in bondage of slavery. And then God called Moses. And then when Moses finally gets to Pharaoh, there were a series of ten plagues because Pharaoh's heart was hardened. It took a while for the people of Israel to see their victory through God. Likewise, it may take a while for this COVID-19 situation to come to an end. God will do it, but in his time. The rescue of the people of Israel wasn't immediate, but it also happened in God's time. So we continue to remember that God does keep his promises, and he is there for us, and that we should not give in to fear, but stand firm and trust that the Lord has fought for you, the Lord is still fighting for you, and the Lord continues to fight for you. You only have to be silent. God will take care of it. So we put our faith and trust in God. Well, I guess maybe we don't have to be perfectly silent. Silent as far as our concern for fear is, but not silent as far as our praise of Jesus Christ is concerned. Remember, as Christians, we remember and we celebrate this day with joy. Yes, the pews may be empty right now, but so was the tomb. And that is the real reason for our joy, for our celebration. For Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. God's peace and many blessings be with you as you remember this day the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In his holy name, amen. Now the peace of God that surpasses all our understanding will continue to guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We join together now in confessing the Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We confess, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men, and for our salvation, came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Rejoicing in the resurrection of our Lord, and sharing in his peace, let us pray to the Lord on behalf of ourselves and all people as they have need. O risen Savior, set free our tongues to confess your resurrection before a world still captive to sin and death. Give us courage to go to every place and to speak in every language the salvation won for us upon the cross and the hope granted to us of life that death cannot overcome. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O risen Savior, make us burn with the fire of your love, that we may love you above all things, and love our neighbors as ourselves. Deliver us from fear, 
and relieve the anxiety of our hearts, that we may live out fully the hope planted within us and the new lives we received in the waters of our baptism. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O risen Savior, anoint the words of those who preach to us your gospel and open our ears to hear with faith all that he has done to save us. Raise up many who will serve you in the various callings of your church and who will serve us in your name with your word and gifts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O risen Savior, hear us on behalf of Donald, our president, Jay, our governor, the Congress of the United States, and all state and local elected officials. Guide them according to your word that their labors for our nation's health and welfare may not be in vain, nor forgetful of the vulnerable, aging, and unemployed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O risen Savior, hear us on behalf of those who cry to you in any need, especially the sick, the suffering, the disabled, the wounded in spirit, those who suffer mental illness, and those in their last days on earth, especially Kathy, Dave, Winnie, Vince, Karen, Susan, Retha, Sharon, Donna, Hildegard, George, Jean, Tayrin, Terry, Erica, Bob, Nancy, David, Mark, and the family of Cliff. Give them grace according to their need and sustain them in their afflictions to the day when their sufferings will be exchanged with glory in the life to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O risen Savior, accept the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving from our lips and the tithes and offerings we bring this day. Increase in the hearts of your people, delight in your mercy, gratitude for all your benefits, and eagerness to support the mission of your church in word and deed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O risen Savior, before the words come to our lips, you know the desires of our heart. Hear our prayers as expressions of our trust that you supply us with all things needful and keep from us all things harmful. O crucified and risen Savior, with the Father and the Spirit, you reign as one Lord and one God. Hear the prayers of your people. Your will be done, O Lord, now and always. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. But 
Spirit, be ever shall reign. 